So let's talk about the contagion fueled monster that is Typhus in Warhammer 40k. And with a bunch of mortal wounds and savage melee damage, it's potentially looking pretty auto include for Death Guard armies right now. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd do a focus review on one of the mightiest Death Guard commanders around and take a look over the rules for Typhus and just what he brings to the table. In the video, we'll talk briefly about his miniature, then go over his datasheet bit by bit and a few different ways that you could fill this plague fueled monster in game. As you could probably guess by the thumbnail, I do think that he's looking rather good for the armies of the Death Guard before, pretty viable at 100 points, and now he dropped all the way down to 80. It feels like a deal that's almost too good to pass up. In the lore, Typhus is the lord of the first plague company known as the Harbingers, being a high ranking space marine within the Legion since the days of the Horus Heresy, originally known as Typhon, but when the Legion fell to Nurgle, he became the host of the Destroyer Hive and now commands one of the mightiest fleets of Death Guards from his flagship the Terminus Est, particularly notable for spreading the Shamble Rock Plague of Walking Corpse Poxwalkers far and wide, much to the detriment of the Imperium. In combat, he's a mighty lord wielding a Man Reaper, has terrifying plague psychic abilities, and is a dour and capable commander, skilled at crushing the enemy in a battle of attrition. For his model within Warhammer 40k, he's currently £27, €35 Euros, or $45, a fairly mighty and busy sculpt as befits the first Lord of the Death Guard. I do remember when the miniature was replaced from the old sculpt that you can see on the top right here, which I think as it goes was one of the better classic sculpts, a bit more of a brooding and malign sort of look. Definitely a contrast with the maybe slightly more exuberant and finer details of the Death Guard at the moment. His destroyer hive on the new model is represented by a whole bunch of flies. He's got a fair few other nurglish familiars lurking here and there over him. He is a miniature that quite a lot of Death Guard players might have, given that he comes in the Combat Patrol, kind of unusual in a named character dropping in one of those. The slightly odd one that's alongside 30 Pox Walkers, though I guess it's appropriate enough for his lore spreading the plague to the mortals. As ever, if you were looking to pick up Typhus or any other Warhammer 40k miniatures, there's plenty of places around the world that sell things a little bit cheaper than Games Workshop. Feel free to check out any of these linked in the video description for some money off, and anything bought them does help to support all specs tactics a little bit. Jumping into Typhus's datasheet and rules in 40k though, as mentioned in the latest version of the balanced data slate, he was maybe one of the biggest winners out of the Death Guard army, dropping down from 100 points, where I thought he was already fairly playable, all the way down to 80. And point for point, I'd argue that, that perhaps lands him as being one of the very best damage dealers in the entire index. Statline wise, he has their fairly standard Terminator Lord sort of profile. A big toughness 6, 6 wounds, a 2 plus save, and a 4 plus invulnerable. That is tougher than the vast majority of 80 point characters out there in Warhammer 40k. Small arms aren't really going to be doing all that much to him. In general, you'd need special weapons or heavy weapons to bring him down. He moves 5 inches, so a little bit faster than Pox Walkers or Death Shroud Terminators that he could lease. Not the worst thing in the world to have him slightly rangy out the front, he might be able to decrease a charge distance by an inch occasionally. Not much, but nice to have in a unit that's very slow but also wants to be in melee. He can deep strike like the other Terminators, so could be an interesting target for rapid ingress. And like the rest of the Terminator Lords, he has the option of leading Death Shroud Terminators, Light Lord Terminators or Pox Walkers. For his points cost, I feel like Typhus does have some pretty mighty melee damage. The majority of equivalent characters that have other abilities in different factions don't tend to be striking at big damage 3 hits at this kind of points cost. His Mastercrafted Man Reaper gets you 5 attacks, hitting on a 2 plus, at strength 9, AP minus 2, damage 3 and lethal hits, and in reality it might often be better than that. You'd have the minus 1 toughness from Contagions of Nurgle if you're in melee with something, so that'd mean that he'd be wounding toughness 5 things on a 2 plus and toughness 10 things on a 4. And anything tougher than that is also going to profit from those lethal hits, which increases damage output significantly against toughness 12 and the like. He also gets a fairly punchy anti horn mode as well, 10 attacks at strength 6, AP 1 and damage 1, so he's definitely not going to get bogged down too much by lighter infantry. Between all that, it just makes him a fairly good threat against almost everything in the game. His average damage output kills around 6 guardsmen, 2 or 3 space marine intercessors, 1 or 2 terminators, about 5 wounds on average to a toughness 10 3 plus save vehicle, or 3 wounds on average to a land raider. It's not quite make back your points in one single round of combat, but it's really not too far off. 
That's at least fairly impressive that he is pretty much equally effective against just about anything that you throw him into. Quite general purpose close combat there. Otherwise, for his buffing rules, he gives his unit a minus one to his in melee that he only gets if he's leading a unit, so he doesn't get it if it's just him dropping solo or anything. Still though, that's quite a nice boost to have from the destroyer hive. Means that if the enemies are trying to assail your death shroud in close combat, they won't be quite as easy to take out as they otherwise would be. And he is going to be a unit that's kind of likely to wind up in combat, seeing as he's going to be seeking it out himself. His really fairly godly special rule though that I think puts him over the edge compared with most other characters out there is the Eater Plague. I'd argue this is the single nicest bit out of his entire data sheet, if anything. In the shooting phase, he gets to target one enemy unit within 18 inches for his psychic attack. You do need to roll a 2 plus to avoid a bounce back and taking some mortal wounds from perils. But if you can roll a 2 to 5, then that enemy unit that you target suffers d6 mortal wounds. And on a 6, you get d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. Obviously very swingy, and you certainly could roll low, but you could roll very high in d's. Just get that d6 and roll a 5 or a 6, and you could basically just wipe out an entire enemy squad if you're lucky. Accounting for the chance of failure and the chance of a big 6, you average out to just under 4 mortal wounds per activation. It means that even if you discounted his fairly good melee damage, you'd only need to activate this maybe twice against hard targets to justify his 80 points in a theory craft world. If you did destroy 8 wounds worth of land raider, that'd be in theory 120 points worth of model slain. And destroying 2 or 3 terminators would also be well worth his 80 points. The best bit about it is that it's just not really possible to shut this down either. It's not a shooting attack, so even if Typhus does wind up in melee, you can target anything within 18 inches, even if it's not in combat with you. The only restriction is that Typhus needs to see it, and given line of sight rules in 40k, you could draw that from the top of his Man Reaper, which shouldn't be too hard to do. It's also not technically a shooting attack as well, it's a data sheet ability, so it gets around certain restrictions that might stop you targeting enemy units, so you might be able to hit, say, a lone operative that's outside of 12 inches, or other units with similar rules that might otherwise be completely safe. And then just as a bonus, if Typhus does go and walk with the zombies, if he happens to be within a unit of pox walkers, then any casualties caused by this gets to restore models to his unit, so contributes to adding a little bit of chaff hordes back to the table, as well as destroying enemies pretty efficiently. If you can basically keep Typhus alive and shooting this and swinging in melee for a couple of turns, then unless it's just completely screened out of anything meaningful to get his damage into, it does look like you're in for a rather good time. Overall, basically for his data sheet, he does have really quite strong melee damage for 80 points with a bunch of damage 3 attacks. He's got very nicely strong range damage for 80 points with the mortal wounds just going through anything fairly evenly. If he gets any one turn to shoot and fight, he's got a very good chance of justifying his points cost then and there, never mind if he goes on to do other things or soak up a bunch of enemy fire in the next turn. And at least for a character point of view, he's really not bad durability either, though a lot of the time he might well be hidden in a squad and protected from direct damage at least initially. Overall, I just feel like he's loads and loads of value. For ways to field him, perhaps the single most obvious feels like the Death Shroud Terminators. I'd likely be tempted by a unit of 3 of them as opposed to a unit of 6, that's to get you a 200 point squad alongside Typhus. I feel like for that cost you've already got enough melee damage that you handle most normal sized threats in the game then and there. I feel like you probably have more value in taking more units of individual Death Shroud rather than building out the squad to 6. For what they add though, they give you another 9 wounds of Terminator, so make them a lot more tanky. While they have a character attached, they're minus 1 to wound against anything that's greater strength than their toughness, so they are extra hard to kill with the weapons that are usually quite efficient against them. They contribute to firepower a little bit with Plague Spurt Gauntlets, but most importantly they have a big 12 attacks at strength 8, AP 2 and damage 2 with lethal hits with their own Man Reapers. I feel like Typhus complements that quite nicely by being able to wound toughness 10 on a 4+, plus and also contributing some damage 3. Between their attacks and Typhus's, most units in the game would have to fear that combo. Overall, just between the two, you have a very scary melee threat that isn't exactly a pushover durability-wise either. I'd probably think about ideally rapid ingressing them to get around their short movement, look out for a place where you can drop them somewhere safe behind terrain, and then move to get a short charge on the enemy, maybe bodging a command point re-roll to make sure they get there. I feel like for a 200 point formation, it'd be really hard to go wrong with this squad in just about any Death Guard list. Just two very efficient units, an enormous melee threat, and a bonus attack of Flurries of Mortal Wounds. 
there's not a lot not to like. At the moment, I would be far more likely to go for Death Shroud than Blight Lords. I just feel like the Blight Lords are badly balanced at the moment, given that they just have so much less melee damage output. Getting extra Terminators is sort of a bit of a side grade compared with that minus one to wound rule as well. I feel like for the points cost, Death Shroud are the way to go. Otherwise though, Typhus definitely feels like he has options. You could put him into a big squad of 20 Pox Walkers. That'd be 100 points for 20 Chaff Bodies with their 5 plus feel no pain. And you could just march them up the board to contest and take a midfield objective. You'd have really quite a lot of points of objective control given all the zombies. And Typhus could still use the Eater Plague attack even if he advances. Should be enough to soak a good amount of enemy small arms. And then hopefully Typhus would still have a pretty reasonable chance of living to get into combat. And smashing people with the Eater Plague for multiple turns. Resurrecting some zombies if you manage to slay any infantry with the Eater Plague is always a positive as well. Finally, while putting him in units, I do think is probably the most sensible way to go. I've certainly seen a couple of people running him in competitive lists for 100 points and just using him completely solo. Death Guard have a lack of lone operatives for that kind of role, but just the raw efficiency of Typhus could make him interesting enough for a similar kind of role to that. Really quite a cheap unit with a small unit profile that you could just deep strike to do secondary objectives and things, like behind enemy lines or deploy teleport homers. And depending on the secondary objective or his line of sight and things, he could still potentially be firing off the Eater Plague while he did that, maybe even in threatening a charge unless he needed to do an action of some sort. So you could potentially just put him down in a really annoying position where the opponent can't focus heavy guns on him, and if you can only hit him with small arms, he's probably going to survive, and then be able to move and inflict damage next turn with the Eater Plague or maybe his Man Reaper to clear a squad of backfield objective holders. Might be a bit of a quirky use for him, but I think there's enough value there to make him worth it for that role if you want it. He'd have to be against an enemy that didn't screen uh, awesomely well and didn't have the ability just to move and kill him dead though, and likely make some clever use of terrain. Overall, as you can probably tell, I feel like Typhus is a pretty awesome data sheet right now. For support within the index, he's got a few other options. As mentioned, the Contagions of Nurgle for the minus one toughness and extra AP certainly take his melee to the next level. I didn't include the extra AP in that melee damage calculation earlier, but it certainly helps out against things like the Intercessors or the Land Raider. As mentioned, I quite like Rapid Ingress for him, otherwise for Death Guard specific stratagems, you've got access to sustained hits, extra AP in combat if that's needed as well. You could have him up to AP4 if you wanted, or AP5 on critical hits if all the stars align. And there's that 2 CP1 for minus 1 damage when he's attacked in melee, probably a bit pricey. But I guess in theory, between him and a Death Shroud Terminator unit, you could have a minus one to hit, a minus one to wound, and also minus one damage for enemies attacking you in melee. That'd be a lot of barriers there if combined with their raw profile. Probably a bit expensive though, really. Otherwise, you could potentially think about using a Death Guard Land Raider to deliver him, plus a unit of three Death Shroud. I feel like that's not really the worst idea in the world. Certainly helps get around their slow movement, and it's not like it's a useless data sheet in itself. Could be one way to get things done if you didn't fancy teleporting or rapid ingressing. For direct competitors, probably the two most major ones are the Lord of Contagion and the Terminator Sorcerer for leading the Death Shroud Terminators. The Lord of Contagion does have similar sort of melee stats, and he does make a Death Shroud unit a bit more mighty in combat with the full rerolls to hit. Personally, I feel like the utility of the Eater Plague probably outweighs that a little bit, particularly given Typhus has some slightly boosted stats in himself. But I feel like perhaps the two maybe aren't too far away from each other. The Sorcerer could also be another option for dropping in and doing a big punch of damage with its big damage 3 Curse of the Leper attack once per game. I feel like it's got a few positives and negatives versus the Aether Plague though, and it certainly does far less damage. Again, I'd probably rate Typhus as the stronger of the two. Overall though, I feel like it's pretty strong stuff. Just an all-round excellent and efficient data sheet for the Death Guard right now. I'd rate it as one of the strongest in the Index to fight some very good competition out there. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the Lord of the First Plague Company. Look forward to hearing all your ideas down in the comments. And feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more about this. I do tend to post new 40k videos just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. And you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, 
The link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.